friends, welcome back to my channel, or if you are new, welcome. My name is Whitney, I am 30 years old, I am 5'6", and I am on a weight loss journey. On October 27th, 2020, I had VSG surgery, that's the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, also known as the gastric sleeve, which is a type of weight loss surgery. Um, I started on this journey back in about May of 2020, and at that time I was at my high weight of 282.4 pounds. It took about five months from the time I started the process to when I actually had surgery, and during that time I lost about 23 pounds. So on the day of surgery, I was 259 pounds even. I'm coming at you today with my one month post-op update. And today I weighed in at 243.4 pounds. So, uh, and forgive me, I'm gonna look down at my notes to make sure I get the numbers right. That is a monthly loss of 15.6 pounds and a total loss of 39 pounds even. Um, so that's crazy, it's already been a month. 15 pounds in a month, 15.6 uh, pounds in a month is amazing. Um, you know, I know there are people that have lost a lot more than that in their first month, but you know, that's probably the most weight I've ever lost in a one month time period. So I'm happy with it. I hope it keeps up and uh, I'm looking forward to what the coming months have, uh, have to give me. So before I get into some more stats, I also wanted to give you just in case you haven't been watching my weekly updates, a little bit of background information about what my process has been like recovery and all of that. So um, like I said, I had surgery on October 27th and I have been very, very lucky that I've had a very smooth recovery. I've not had really any, certainly no complications at all, but really no um, unpleasant side effects from the surgery um, that many people experience. I really haven't dealt with any nausea. I haven't vomited at all. Um, I haven't real. I didn't have much pain. I did take pain meds, uh, prescription pain meds for a few days after surgery, and then I can uh, continued taking just Tylenol for probably maybe two weeks total after surgery. Um, and since then, I've been off pain meds other than like if I get a headache or something. So that's been very lucky. Um, the few things that I have had as side effects have been very minor. So the first thing was immediately after surgery, I did get a pretty mild case of oral thrush, um, which is very common after antibiotics. Um, a lot of women get yeast infections. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get those. Sometimes I get thrush. It just seems to be uh, side of, sort of the luck of the draw, but pretty much any time I have antibiotics, I get one or the other. This time it was thrush. Uh, it's very, very easy to remedy. Um, there's basically just a prescription mouthwash that you use for about 10 days and that clears it up. So that's what I did. It wasn't a big deal. Um, it wasn't even the worst case that I've had, but I did want to mention that. I don't know that I've mentioned that on my channel before, but I did have that um, just from the antibiotics that they gave me in the hospital. And the other thing that I have is... Um, I have dealt with the constipation that a lot of weight loss surgery patients experience after surgery. That situation is kind of starting to resolve itself. I do take a stool softener every day and I've been doing that since about two weeks post-op, I wanna say, so I think that helps. But at this point, I'm also able to eat more, both in terms of volumes and a variety of foods. And so I think that helps too that my body's getting a little bit more of a balanced diet as opposed to just liquids or just proteins. So um, that situation seems to be resolving itself. It's not that big of a deal. It's super common. Um, and then the last thing that I do experience is I get um, a little lightheaded, a little dizzy if I stand up too quickly, especially if I'm going from lying down, excuse me, to standing up. I will get um, a little bit dizzy. It's not too bad. I haven't passed out or fallen over. Um, it's just a little bit dizzy. I stand there for a second and I'm fine. If I just stand up slowly, then it's not a problem, but sometimes I forget. Um, and then the, the last thing that you just saw is I do definitely get very burpy. <laughs> like I'm kind of burping all the time, especially if I've been eating or drinking recently. I took, so, uh, I drank some water right before I started filming this. So 
I get some of those burps. Your stomach just has less uh, space in it. So when you swallow that air, it kind of has to get itself out or it can be uncomfortable. It was much worse at the beginning than it is now. It's not like I uh, am sitting at the dinner table and belching my heart out or anything like that. It's pretty mild. But those are the things I've experienced. Like I said, I've been very lucky. I know a lot of people have a much harder time with recovery than I have. Um, I also want to talk to you about my diet progression. So for my surgeon, she has a pretty aggressive diet progression. Um, and so for me, what that meant was the day before, the day of, and the day after surgery, I was on clear liquids only. Um, that was after I had done a two-week pre-op liquid diet, which I've documented on this channel. You can check out those videos um, if you want to see that. But so I did three days of clear liquids, um, day before, day of, day after surgery. I was discharged from the hospital the day after surgery, went home, and the following days, so that would be uh, day two after surgery, I started on full liquids. So that was basically protein shakes, broths, and soups I could have. Anything that was really thin um, and soupy, anything drinkable, basically, I could have. I did that for a week and didn't have any problems and so was then advanced to start on purees. I did a week of purees. I have a whole purees uh, meal prep video. It's actually a two part video where I show you what I ate on purees. Again, all of that went fine. And then the next week I advanced to soft foods. Again, <laughs> I did a video about what I ate on soft foods. So you can find that on my channel. Did soft foods for a week and then was cleared um, to move on to the regular diet, which means I no longer have any food restrictions. I can eat technically anything I want, though of course the point of this journey is to lose weight. So I am definitely eating, you know, a, a diet. Um, I'm following a diet. So I tend to stick to low carb, high protein foods. Um, I don't eat a lot of, you know, starchy vegetables. I really don't eat a lot of carbs at all other than vegetables. And then fat, I don't have a specific target for. Um, I'm not doing keto where I'm intentionally eating high fat, um, nor am I intentionally eating low fat. It's just kind of the the chips can fall where they may in terms of the fats that I have. Um, but I really watch my carbs and my protein. So high, high protein, low carb. Um, and that's been working pretty well, I think. Um, I've been on the full diet for about a week now, I guess. I think that's right. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit over a week now. So that's that's been going fine. I haven't had anything that's made me sick. Um, I did talk about in my week four update video that I did get a little nauseous the other day after eating some pork rinds, but I've had those a few times since and I haven't had any issues with uh, feeling sick. So who knows? I think it was just kind of a fluke. Um, the medications that I'm on, at this point, I'm only on one. So for the first month post-op, I was on Protonix, which is a proton pump inhibitor that's used for acid reflux. My doctor put that on me essentially preemptively to help uh, prevent acid reflux while my stomach is still getting used to its new size. And I took the last one of those yesterday. So technically, as of today, I am no longer uh, on any, uh, any, like, heartburn medications my surgeon told me take this for the first month and then see how you do if you have acid reflux issues then try some of the over-the-counter um, heartburn medications first things like Prilosec and then if those don't work to contact her office and she will prescribe me the the protonics again um, but to try the over-the-counter stuff first I've not had any acid reflux issues thus far, but again, I've been on that PPI and I've read that that can kind of stay in your system for up to a week. So, and I've, I've really not been off it very long. So we'll see what happens. I'll continue to talk about these things in my weekly updates, um, but so far so good with, with that. The other medication that I was put on at my two week post-op visit is Uracidol, which is a uh, gallbladder medication that my surgeon has given me to prevent gallstones. So I guess a lot of um, 
weight loss surgery patients have issues with gallstones. They're caused by the rapid weight loss. And so she put me on a medication to prevent those. I'll be on that for six months and I take that twice a day. Um, I guess that medication can have some side effects, including nausea. Um, I haven't experienced those other than again, that one day when I had a little bit of nausea, but I have no idea what that was attributable to and it hasn't been an issue since. So um, that's kind of it. I do take a whole rash of other vitamins, including my bariatric multivitamin that I take four times a day. Um, I'm thinking I'll do a separate video just on the vitamins that I take, but it's really that bariatric multivitamin and the two prescription medications that I told you uh, that my doctor requires me to take. Everything else is something I take by choice. Um, I haven't experienced significant hair loss that I've noticed. I do feel like I see hair coming out, but I don't see it like noticeable on my head. Um, so we'll see if that gets worse. I have a lot of hair, so I'm not, even though I'm sure I'll experience hair loss, it's not something I'm too concerned about, but if it's something that gets to be really noticeable, I'll report back to you guys. So that's kind of the groundwork. What I want to talk about is sort of what this journey has been like for me, what, uh, how it's been lived up in terms of my expectations. And the biggest thing is it's been harder, or maybe not harder. I always expected that this journey would not be easy, right? Um, some people say, you know, surgery is the easy way out. I don't know that I agree with that. It certainly helps, right? We wouldn't be doing it if it didn't help, but I don't think it's easy. This journey has not been easy, but it's hard in different ways than I expected. So I expected recovery to be harder. Um, I expected things like meeting my macro goals to be harder. Um, and those things have been pretty straightforward for me. I don't really have a big issue hitting my protein goals. Um, I'm supposed to be eating between 60 to 80 grams of protein a day. I usually get around 70. It's not a big deal. I filmed several what I eat in a day videos um, that you can find on my on my channels if you want to see what I'm eating. I also post a lot of what I eat on Instagram um, and I'll link my Instagram's linked down below. So if you're interested in following me there, you'll see more of what I eat over there. Um, but it's been harder in that for me, I have not felt the super tight restriction that a lot of people experience after the surgery where, you know, they take three bites and they're full. Like that has not been my experience at all. I definitely can still eat um, a reasonable portion of food. I'm not going to say a large portion because um, I don't know if I could eat a large portion. I haven't tried, right? I'm not interested in pushing my surgery to its limits to see how far I can go because that wasn't why I had this surgery. At this point, um, a month out from surgery, I eat up to five ounces at a time and I pretty much always finish that. There have been one or two occasions where I haven't and usually that's not been because I feel super physically full but because I do feel satiated and um, I know that it's plenty, I don't need to eat anymore and quite frankly, usually it's because I'm not enjoying what I'm eating all that much. So that's what I'm doing right now. I do pretty much weigh and measure everything I eat. And um, I've been sticking to that five ounces because I've found that that is enough for me to feel satiated. I don't feel like I'm still hungry by the time I'm done eating, but nor would I describe myself as having a physical sensation of feeling full. Um, I do feel like I could eat more, but I choose not to. Um, so I think that's been a little hard for me. I expected that I would have to eat, you know, diet type foods after this because the goal is weight loss. I can't be eating, you know, sugary foods or, or deep fried foods or anything like that. But I thought the portion control part of it would be a little bit more built in. And that's really not been the case for me. I do have to portion out my food and really stick to that. Um, and so I think mentally it's been just a little harder than I thought it would be. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's not impossible and I'm seeing results and that keeps me motivated. Um, so that's been fine. One interesting experience I did have this month is that yesterday was, uh, Thanksgiving and I did go to a Thanksgiving dinner at my sister's house. We did a very small gathering. Excuse me. I made myself uh, a very small plate with just the things that I really enjoy about Thanksgiving. I ignored the things that I could kind of take or leave. 
I took my time with my plate. Um, I didn't take the food scale with me over there, but I've gotten pretty good at figuring out what's what. I don't think I had more than five ounces, or if I did, it was only slightly more. Um, during the time that most of the people at the table had their whole plates of food and usually seconds, I ate my little plate and then I was done. I waited probably an hour and a half and then I had about half a piece of pie. It was actually my uh, nine-year-old nieces. She had a piece of pie that she didn't finish and I ate most of the rest of it, not all of it. I didn't eat, like, there was a little bit left. I did feel pretty full after that. Um, so I have experienced the sensation of fullness, but I don't get that every time I eat. Um, I don't know if that experience was because I had eaten, you know, an hour and a half earlier or if, because I was eating pumpkin pie with whipped cream on top and that's very heavy, much heavier than um, things that I've been eating. And certainly it has a lot more sugar in it than anything I've been eating. But I definitely felt full when I ate that. But I enjoyed my uh, meal. We did eat outside, so it got cold really quickly. So I didn't enjoy it as much as I probably would have in other times, but that's fine. Um, I did have one serving of leftovers today for lunch. And um, other than that, I'm, I'm not eating a bunch of leftovers. I am really trying to stay on plan and stick to my um, low carb way of eating that I've been doing. So, I think that's all that I have to report for my one month. Um, I am gonna insert here some before and after pictures. So um, the before pictures were actually taken a little bit before surgery, but are pretty close to the weight I was at the time of surgery. And I think accurately depict what I looked like shortly before surgery. So I'm gonna use those. I forgot to take immediate pre-op pictures, but I think these should be fine. Um, and then I also have pictures that I took today. So um, I feel like I can see a little bit of a difference, especially like in my stomach area, but it's hardly a shocking transformation, which is not surprising given that it's only been a month. But uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Let me know if you see a difference or, or what you think. Um, and then the other thing here is I'm going to put in a picture so you can see my incisions now one month out. I think they look really, really good um, and they're really only going to get looking better. They've looked pretty good from the beginning since my stereo strips came off about two weeks post-op, but they're definitely looking better. I am using scar away strips on them um, and I wear those pretty much 24-7. Um, I talked about in one of my previous pre- uh, weekly update videos that I was kind of frustrated with those because you're supposed to be able to take them off, wash them, and reuse them. And I've just found that they don't stick well after I uh, wash them and reuse them. Um, that's still been the case, but what I've started doing is just putting band-aids over them. Um, I have these really great cloth, uh, like flexi band-aids that have some stretch in them. Put those over them and uh, that keeps the... Uh, it keeps the scar away strip on there just fine. And I do feel like I notice a difference. They're much flatter and smoother than they were before I started using the scar away strips. Some of that is natural healing, but there is science behind using um, silicone based uh, strips over, over incisions. Um, so I'm gonna continue doing that because why not have my scars be as small and as uh, unnoticeable as possible? And I already bought them. So I've been doing that. That works for me. The Band-Aids are a lifesaver. Uh, I almost forgot. I also wanted to give you all an update on my measurements. Um, I did take my measurements a couple days before surgery and I took them again today. I'm not gonna list all of them up on the screen because it would take a while to create a graphic for that. I'll try to do better next month, but I'll give you the quick summary, which is that I've lost one and a quarter inches off of my bust. Um, I haven't lost anything in my neck. I've lost a quarter of an inch from my bicep, two inches from my waist, another two inches from my hips, um, one inch off my thigh, and one and a quarter inches off my calf. So uh, that's pretty phenomenal from just a month ago that I've lost, especially those two inches each off my waist and hips is pretty remarkable. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. I can definitely tell in my clothes, that things fit better, things that I have not worn in a very long time because either they didn't fit or they didn't fit well. 
um, I'm able to fit into now and that's pretty cool. I basically have one pair of jeans that fits. Um, they're still pretty snug. They're not too tight by any means, but I think they'll fit me for a while. So that's good news. Um, and I think that's it. So as always, if you have any questions um, or if you have any thoughts on these videos, things you'd like to see me do, let me know down in the comments. I do read all of my comments. I respond to all of them. If you have ideas for things you'd like to see on this channel, let me know. Um, as long as they're not totally crazy, I'm willing to consider them and give it a try, see what people think. Um, and that's it. So as always, uh, give this video a thumbs up. That does help my channel get more visibility, get the word out there, um, and hopefully help more people. If you have a, a weight loss channel on YouTube, or even, you know, if you are documenting your journey on Instagram, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to follow you. I know a few people have let me know, and I have gone and subscribed to all of them. So um, I'd love to know what you're doing. And uh, if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, and you'll get notified when I post new updates. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.